Hey there, welcome back or to the channel. My name is Brendan and this is Brendan's Outdoors, a channel focused on vehicle-based outdoor exploration. Some people call it car camping, some people call it overlanding, but whatever you call it, it's fun. Whether you're in a fully built 4x4, crossover, a passenger car, a camper van, or whatever you've got, these 10 things have been useful for me out there on the road and on the trail. If you sleep in your car or on your car, like if you have a rooftop tent, this little thing is great. They're designed to be placed and stuck all over RVs so you can tell if surfaces within the vehicle are level. And this one fits inside my cup holder, which is the most level place inside the RAV4. This way, when I'm camping inside the car, I can park somewhere and check how level I am, which significantly improves how I sleep in the car. And I imagine this would also be important for rooftop tent people, if you were one of those kind of people. Let's say you're not trying to stealth camp in a city, and you're out at a campground or dispersed camping somewhere. If you're sleeping in the car or on the roof of the car, and your cup holder level tells you that the car is out of whack one way or the other because you're parked on a mountain or a beach or whatever, you can use these RV leveling blocks to raise one or more of the tires to level out the car. Just remember to take them with you when you're done. I held off on getting one of these for the longest time, but once I started regularly camping in the car instead of outside in my Gazelle hub tent, a USB fan was a must. It keeps the air moving inside your car, which can help cut down on condensation, and obviously helps regulate temperature inside the car while you sleep. This particular fan is USB-C powered, can be charged while it's operating, has a light built into it with three levels of brightness, comes in a bunch of snazzy colors, and can clip onto the grab handle or ceiling organizer net. This thing is great because it allows you to take advantage of the usable space that's up against the ceiling in the car. I'll use it to keep soft things like extra pillows, blankets, towels, and hoodies, but I also like to keep random dog stuff in there. It's a handy place to keep things like glasses, phones, and keys within arm's reach while you're sleeping in the car, though it will reduce headroom for you while you're camping in the vehicle and for any passengers you might have in your car while you're just using it as a daily driver. It's advertised as being suspended from the four grab handles in the car, but that would have put it right over my head and in the way of the moonroof, so I used a couple pieces of small paracord, tied them to my rear hatch, and attached the net to those instead. I like having this thing for smaller items like loose change, tissues and napkins, parking passes and hang tags like the America the Beautiful Pass, toll passes, pens, maybe a small notebook. I also added a couple pieces of paracord ties to the zipper to make them easier to see and to pull. This one's a little goofy, but it turned out more useful than I thought. If you're a frequent road tripper, having this little table that can quickly and easily attach to your steering wheel is a nice way to keep your car clean and organized if you're going to eat in the car. I suppose you could also use it as a temporary desk if you wanted to use a laptop or tablet in the car as well. I don't know that I actually trust the cup holders to hold a drink successfully when there's a cup holder right next to it, but if you're feeling brave, you go right ahead. This 12 volt inverter was one of the first things I ever bought for car camping. It plugs into your car's 12 volt socket and allows you to charge and use several USB or three prong items. I've never really powered or ran anything other than my computer off of it. I don't regularly camp with like a blender or a waffle maker or anything like that. But with something like this, you could try if you wanted to, as long as those things don't exceed the amperage. I've used this in my own car camping setup, but I've also used it when traveling and expanded the power capability of rental vehicles from standard passenger cars to camper vans. 
The Noko Boost Plus is a must-have if you're going off-grid or if you just have a car. This thing replaces jumper cables and the need to have another vehicle to hook them up to. With this jumper pack, if your battery dies, you can jump yourself without the need for another vehicle. It hooks directly to the battery and, as long as you've charged it before you attempt to use it, it'll jump your car back to life. It's also a reusable battery, so you can use it to recharge USB devices like your phone, and it has a built-in flashlight for when you're working in the dark. Ston Tire Deflators are an easy way to deflate your tires when going off-road. You can set them to your desired off-roading tire pressure and then screw them onto the air valves of your tires, allowing you to air down all four of your tires without having to crouch down next to your vehicle the whole time. I'm not going to go into a whole thing about airing down your tires, but the short reason why you would want to air down your tires is that it makes it more comfortable on the trail and less likely for you to puncture a tire. If you're going to air down your tires, eventually you're going to have to air them back up. And going miles on pavement on aired down tires to get to a gas station isn't the best idea. Having an air compressor in your vehicle is useful when you need to air up after driving off pavement for a while and to help you repair flat tires. There are a wide variety of air compressors available online. Mine is from Fiair and it has served me well. Speaking of flat tires, a repair kit for flats is an important thing to keep in your car in case you get a puncture out there on the road. Combined with a good air compressor, you're set in most situations in case you get something in one of your tires.